Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations, where we generally look at one or another lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And because we began a new church season yesterday, we're in the uh, the Jessima Sundays or the pre Lenten season. Uh, because of that, we've kind of rebooted and started all new uh, sections of the lectionary uh, for our morning and evening prayer. Usually we follow through sequentially through the epistles and through the gospels, and then we jump around a bit, but mostly sequentially through Old Testament portions of the, that's assigned for morning and evening prayer. Um, however, um, we because we start a new season, we start fresh with new books, new sections. Uh, and so uh, this week we're reading, uh, or actually next couple of weeks, uh, we're starting off the beginning with, uh, with Genesis. We're starting the sixth chapter of Mark's gospel. Uh, uh, we're beginning in the middle of Amos, the uh, the prophet, and beginning at the letter of Paul uh, to the Galatians. Uh, I thought we'd take a look at the lesson that's assigned uh, for morning prayer from Genesis. And why not? Because, you know, Genesis literally means beginning, right? It means, and, and when we say the book of Genesis, it's not the book of Genesis, it's the book Genesis. In other words, the title's taken from the beginning of the actual book. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the heaven was out form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in it and upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven and divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be for the lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Okay, so actually the reading assigned for today uh, stops there. So we got the first four days of creation. Uh, what do we take from this? Now, there's plenty of people who want to take it absolutely 100% literally, and God bless them. Uh, there are some who want to just completely write it off as, as some sort of fanciful narrative, uh, and, and God bless them too. But Here's what we can take from this, and this is what we must remember. God's in charge, right? Uh, creation came out of nothing, and that God is the one who did it. That God is the one who, by his will and by his love and by his mercy, created the world. Now, the details, here's a set of details, right? But let's not get caught up in trying to parse through Oh my goodness, that, that one little thing. Oh, well, what about this one thing, right? Let's look at the big overarching picture of the love of God that he had for us in creating in a wonderful and systematic way. And any other creation thing that we could possibly look at scientifically shows that there is systematic order to it. And so God is in doing this. But most importantly, we know that in the end, the highest of all creation is mankind. Humanity is the greatest and the above all, the, the pinnacle of creation. But that's tomorrow's reading. So you can go ahead, you can read ahead if you want, uh, and because it's all wonderful and good news, and we have a God who loves us so much. Today's Monday. We have uh, Holy Communion at 1215 today, and evening prayer at five o'clock, and I do hope that you can join us to glorify God in worship and to receive the sacrament. May God bless you.